Our breakfast this morning. Fred had sausage. I just have the bacon. So I believe that this is a saltwater marsh estuary. It looks like it might be a lower tide right now, doesn't it? Right there is where our camper is. We are very close to these cabins. Look at this longleaf pine tree. It's really leaning towards the land, which I read something about that. It leans towards the land for a reason when there's salt water nearby. These longleaf pines are gorgeous. Oh look, there's the observation tower. Well, it's not too high and it's below the tree, so what can you see? It looks more like a deer stand. It does. Quite a bit of erosion on the side of that bank there. I'm not sure what that building is. It looks like some kind of a pavilion. And this looks like a miniature golf course over here. So this is the nature center. There's a 1.25 mile loop trail behind it. Look at that. This is an eastern king snake. Oh, there's his head. Look at that. Beatles.
So I guess this is a bobcat. Yes, they have a lot of these at a park near our house. I hope to be filming them soon. And I guess that is a diamondback rattlesnake. I would not want to see that out in the, on a hike. We had one of these come into our campsite last night. We made hamburgers and the pan, we put it in a bucket of soapy water and it grabbed our pan and took it halfway down the trail. So we're gonna check out this little uh, one mile trail behind the nature center. So there's been a lot of prescribed fire burns around here and this is kind of an interesting area that they must have disked up um, to act as a fire break. This is a very pretty trail with all the pine trees. There was a sign back there that said trail closed, but we heard from others in the park that you can um, still access this trail. They said that it just gets a little mucky. So we blew past the trail closed sign and now we're gonna see what happens here. So far, so good. So this is likely why the, why the trail is closed. It's a little bit muddy Ew, right through here. A little slippery and muddy. Let's try to stay on the side of it. It's pretty bad right there. But I'm pretty sure that's why this section of the trail is closed. Pretty mud. Ah, damn, damn, damn. Okay. Uh, hopefully this doesn't last long. Try not to get my shoes too muddy. They're okay. Okay, so we have lost the trail. <sighs> Fred says that he sees the nature center right up here. Oh my. Lucy's generally pretty good about finding a path. I guess we made our way back. <laughs> Come on. Yep, here's the nature center. <laughs> we did it. But look at our little white dog. She's filthy. This is historic downtown St. Mary's. A nice little bed and breakfast Spencer house in and there's a lot to do down here that would be a nice bed and breakfast to come to
there are several bed and breakfasts down through this area. It's a very old town. Orange Hall Gilman Cultural Center. Orange Hall takes its name from the large sour orange trees which used to encircle the property built for uh, Reverend Southworth Pratt. It is a showcase of antebellum life in the Greek revival style. And um, this was constructed in 1830. Oh my goodness. Wow. Let's see. I'm sure it's locked. It is. It's pretty amazing. These columns are beautiful. Look at this town. This is quite an interesting town. The buildings are just so old. Very historic. It's beautiful. And the boat that I take to go over to Cumberland Island is just at the end of this street. Wonder what's around back. They had to have a lot of windows. Georgia summer. Beautiful. Big old windows. Wow. Look at the back of it. I guess this is some sort of a public park because there's a restroom, public restroom right there. It looks like some kind of a rose bush tree. I've never seen a plant like that before. That is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, we forgot our map. Typical us. So I just turned on this all trails map and this is where we are, the little blue dot. The green is where we started. So we're almost to the Crooked River and then we're gonna turn back left and go back to our campsite. So we made it to the river trail. Be aware of venomous snakes. And alligators. Oh, this is pretty cool. Look at that embankment. This almost looks like some sort of a drainage channel or a wash. Make, make a left up there. Make a left. Don't go near the dangerous cliff. The trail goes that way. Is that a good view right there, though? Yeah. Let me see the view. It's a dead end. Oh, look, that's a nice view. Wow.
gorgeous. It's all salt water. I think the tide's coming in. It does. It looks like high tide, doesn't it? It's like high tide. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, so we know from our walk yesterday that if we stay along this split rail fence along the river that it takes us right up to the back side of our campsite. Look at the armadillo, Fred. Look, Lucy. <laughs> oh gosh. Lily, let's go. Lucy, let's go. <laughs> that armadillo had no idea that he was about to encounter the dynamic duo of Lily and Lucy. That is so pretty. That is such a pretty view. This is a beautiful park. We've really been enjoying it. Crooked River State Park in southeastern Georgia. Hey, and here we are, right back at our campsite. We walked the whole way. We didn't have to take our car to a trailhead or anything. And let me check my watch to see how many miles we've done today. This is the check-in and visitor center. I see that they do rent bikes here. You can see the little bike rental sign. It'd be nice if you uh, went to Cumberland Island from this campsite, you could possibly rent a bike here and take it over. I don't know if it's any less expensive or not, but just a thought. But this is a very convenient state park to get to Cumberland National Seashore. It's 15 minutes away. Group shelter. And then what is this coming up on the right? It's the a bait little- shop. Bait shop. And you went in there? Yeah. What all did they have? Just tackle and live bait, worms. Well, not so much worms because it's all salt water here. And then I guess this is the parking for the boat ramp. Yeah, there's the ramp right there. Very nice. Check this out. This is an actual shell of a, I believe, a nuclear submarine. And we are at Kings Bay Naval Base think it is it is immediately adjacent to the state park and this naval base is huge I believe there's only a few naval bases in the country like this um, where the submarines come in and out this is awesome. So they do have nuclear submarines here. And it would be the thrill of a lifetime to be able to tour one of those nuclear submarines. Google says that this naval submarine base is home to eight submarines. I think that when you enlist into the Navy, if you are assigned 
a submarine, you are on this submarine for your entire career unless you know you ask to be transferred but you know they have people that spend their entire career on one vessel and i think they have you know maybe 200 people 200 sailors on board these Oh boy, now I have walked on top of a submarine. <laughs> wow. Look at this. I guess when it comes up, it can look out right there without revealing the whole body of the, sh of the ship. Isn't that something? This is the naval base right here. There's a lot of traffic coming in and out of there. This is a huge naval base. Huge. So Fred just told me that he's been inside a submarine before. When have you been in a submarine? Uh, one time when I lived in Fort Lauderdale down in Davie, a uh, diesel sub came into port at Fort Lauderdale and they allowed people to, uh, well, since we were law enforcement, they took us down and to uh, the sub, but we can only go so far. We were down in the torpedo room and there were guys who had beds, mattresses, spread out next to the torpedoes where they slept. <laughs> but there was a real stench of diesel fuel yeah, I've been inside one. What's the name of this place, sweetheart? St. Mary's Seafood. Nice little restaurant. And a great treat after a hard day out at Cumberland Island. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Friday morning. It's 8.30. Fred's been up for an hour. We are getting ready to pack up and change state parks. We're at Crooked River State Park now, and we are moving to Stephen B. Foster State Park. It is very cold outside. I think it's in the very low 40s. And the dogs and me are, uh, we're very happy in here. We don't want to go out, but I have to go out and help Fred pack up so we can move today. It's a big day. I have stayed inside the camper with Lily and Lucy and packed everything up inside. So now all we have to do is wheel the bike in through that door and it'll come out that door and uh, we have to secure everything outside and we'll be ready to roll. We bought this humidity dryer at Christmas time. I got it for Fred. I think I paid, I don't know, around $30 for it. It does not work at all. I can tell no difference with this being in our camper. None. Just a little FYI. We are breaking down our camp. Fred is a pro at this. He's a mover and a shaker, aren't you? That's right. We are hooked up and ready to roll. Be sure to like and subscribe and please join us for our next adventure where we are headed to Stephen Foster State Park and we're going to tour the Oki Binoki Swamp. We are headed there right now. It should take us about two hours to get there. Thanks for watching.
Okay, so just put me in the viewfinder and walk ahead of me a little bit and I'll walk towards you. Come on, Trailblazer. <laughs> <laughs>